Hi. Good evening. Mm. How are you, Donna? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Actually, you know what? I'm so tired. <laughs> are you tired? <laughs> so tired. Spent so much time writing today and yesterday and just trying to just try to fit it all in. Good for you. That's awesome. Uh, getting better. All, all of your hard work's going to pay off. Eventually, yes. It, it will. will. It <laughs> sure will. Yeah, that's right. You just remember that. You know? Yeah, don't forget that. I won't. It's good. It's all good. I just need some sleep. Yeah. Yes, try to get some, some good sleep at night so that you feel refreshed in the day. And <laughs> yes. yes. I know. I remember that feeling like, oh my gosh, I just felt like I was just 24 seven on my machine, you know, right. and it, it will pay off. Yes. You know, I know. And I remember thinking, guys, some of the people that I like that I was going to school with, I noticed they weren't on their machine as much, but a lot of those people had to take the test over and over and over again. So really it yeah. does pay off, you know, yeah. it's like you, you have to put in the time. So I'm sure. Right. Sure. Sure yeah, stay dedicated. That's right. Outside. That's right. I'm just marking my watch here for. I have a couple of things that are marked in twenties instead of twenty fives. Yeah. But I just want to mark my watch so I know. Yeah, take your time. No worries. Oh. Okay, let's see. Two twenty five will be at five. Five. All right. Perfect. Yeah, now I'll have that. I, I have them by memorized with the um with when they're marked in twenties or I'm sorry, twenty-fives, but when it's marked in twenties, it's like, oh, then I have to you, you would laugh at my watch. Let me show you my watch. Look at that. Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> so the the regular lines are marked, that means like twenty-fives, and then the dots are that just means twenties. So it's just and then I've got it marked for low speeds, mid speeds, high speeds. <laughs> So for a while, I would just like every class, I would take it like a, um, a towel and wipe it off. And I thought, why, why not just leave it on there? And now I know exactly what it is, but right. I always like, need to buy like 10 of them from Amazon, you know, just that's right. <laughs> that's awesome. right. That's right. I know. And these watches are so expensive. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. And then, uh, I know Robert got some extra ones and when he got them in, the little uh, clicky, like the reset button, they, they didn't work. So then he had to order new ones. So yeah, it's, it's like a, a precious commodity around here wow. to have a watch, you know? Yeah. So anyways, well, we'll get started. Okay, yeah. so we'll do a finger dexterity drill with words. Okay, here we go, ready? Grain, sharp, drill, black, shoot, threat, drain, chest, hair, skate, cross, cream, Drain, chair, bless, spur, child, flush, prompt, crack, sled, crime, sport, plum, spool, prune, slide, glow, truck, splint, glue, splice, blue, pride, frail, cried, slice, frame, spoke, them, slip, crown, spoon, crush, choose, dry, stroll, plate. Chin through stuff, pledge, wine, groom, clutch, skirt, stub, plain stitch, plug, snatch, brawl, slug, plus, stud, draw, flung, sky, snug, dress, dredge, wheel, wheeze, pluck, swear, skill, club, plead, globe, tray, glass, soft, stunt, chop. Trade, spleen, clean, splash, tribe, sneak, swore, drop, string, drug, split, stroke, trial, draft, glob, straight, glare, switch, splash, tribe, sneak, grant, drift, splurge, groom, thrash, glint, shake, gleam, dwell. All right. Moving into our next drill. I've got some consonant compounds and it focuses on final MT, 
final LD, final RS. Okay, here we go, ready? The gold was sold to Ted. He filled the field with players. She told the police the man was bald. Ben called for a new mold. He held the collar on hold. Frank mailed the old coin. Did you attempt to cite him for contempt? Tom is always prompt with the peremptory challenge. Sal wished he had finished his work sooner. Joe cashed his check and finished for an hour. He bashed into the wall and smashed his finger. Sue washed the clothes and dashed to work. The fires are worse now. The mares are standing near the flares. He cares about matters that pertain to the robbers. The riders paid the flares before climbing the stairs. The tractors belong to the partners. All right. I have a short phrase review. This is a paragraph long, and you're going to hear of the, is a, with the, he will, with a, we are, are the, had the. All right, and again, it's just a paragraph. And I'm going to read this once at 180, again at 200, and again at 225. Okay, here we go. Mr. Brown of the West Coast Branch is a principal speaker at our next meeting. He had a very good first year with the company. We are the third group of salesmen he will address with a goal toward increasing sales. I had the pleasure of meeting him at our sales convention. Are the sales figures from last quarter available? All right, again at 200. Mr. Brown of the West Coast Branch is a principal speaker at our next meeting. He had a very good first year with the company. We are the third group of salesmen he will address with a goal toward increasing sales. I had the pleasure of meeting him at our sales convention. Are the sales figures from last quarter available? And then the last time at 225. Mr. Brown of the West Coast Branch is a principal speaker at our next meeting. He had a very good first year with the company. We are the third group of salesmen he will address with a goal toward increasing sales. I had the pleasure of meeting him at our sales convention. Are the sales figures from last quarter available? All right. <clears throat> My next drill is going to focus on prefix words that start with con. Okay, so we have conduct, contact, confer, contract. Converge, console, consult, concede, context, connect, convey, consist. All right, I'm just uh, dating this. Here we go. Is the contract valid? The contract is signed at the bottom. Please confer with your attorney. The witness will confer with his lawyer. The contact paper is on the wall. Can you contact your aunt? The group will converge on Main Street. What time will the vehicles converge in the parking lot? The console is in the living room. Did the boy console his mother? Consult your dictionary for an answer to that question. Did anyone consult the code book? The context of the document is on the computer. What is the context of his speech? How do you connect the wiring? We will connect your telephone on Friday. Did she convey her ideas to you? Mark can convey his thoughts very well. His conduct was above reproach. Do you concede that he is right? I will concede defeat. What does the diet consist of? The Saturday night program will consist of songs, dances, skits, readings, and other forms of entertainment. Right. I have a number drill for you, and it focuses on dollar amounts along with check numbers. So I will give you some dollar amounts first. Here we go. $172.44, 5,320.10, 180.08, 12,957.60, 
$0.65, cents, $7,540.29. $4,483,010,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000
Waynesboro, Virginia, 22980. Ms. Margie D. Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, 96 Bellevue Avenue, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. Ms. Kim L. Lancis, L-A-N-S-I-S, 6404 Parrot Road, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46803. Ms. Tammy A. McGavisk, M-C-G-A-V-I-S-K, 73 Oliver Street, Boulevard, New York, 14715. Ms. Michelle R. Baker, B-A-K-E-R, 2550 Lake Michigan Drive, Grand Rapids, Michigan, 49504. Mr. Larry R. Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N, LaPorte Public Schools, Independent School District, number 306, LaPorte, Minnesota, 56461. Ms. Donna Pig, P-I-G-G, 5380 South I-25th Street, Pueblo, Colorado, 81004. Mr. Drew A. Coleman, C-O-L-E-M-A-N, Millersburg Area High School, 7921 Center Street, Millersburg, Pennsylvania, 17061. All right. I have some tangle tamers for you. All right, here we go. Lateral support, criminal intent, irresistible impulse, con I'm sorry, express condition, act or omission, implied condition, mutual obligations, verbal abuse, continuity of use, past consideration, earning capacity, private right, essential elements, corrupt intent, real estate, visible boundaries, quit, quit claim deed, property involved, legal limitations, instances signify, extent of interest, reasonable time, easement defined, most jurisdictions, usually permitted, general principle, arbitrary formula, navigable river, sexual intercourse, further foundation, statutory definition, many jurisdictions, classify forgery, stealing property, permission granted, felonious intent. All right. Now I have, in literary form, I've got a state review for you. So it's kind of nice because it's in a literary format. So I can time it. And I'll read this at 200. Okay. All right, it's about a page long. So it's nice. It's got some length to it, which is nice. All right, so I'll read this at 200. Here we go. I was born in Arkansas, my brother in Tennessee, my sister in North Carolina, and my father and mother in Michigan and Minnesota. My parents met in Georgia and got married in South Carolina. They first lived in Kentucky, but then they moved to Texas. We lived in Iowa, Louisiana, and Mississippi. When I was 10, I visited my aunt in Virginia. The following summer, I went to camp in West Virginia. My brother and sister stayed with our grandparents in Ohio. When I was 12, my parents took us to Connecticut during the fall, where we saw the leaves turn color. We were in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island also. When I was 16, I worked for a company in New Jersey. This company bought parts in Oregon, Pennsylvania, Utah, and Wisconsin. The products were sold in North Dakota, South Dakota, Maryland, and Vermont. The company sent sales representatives to New Mexico, Nevada, Colorado, and Iowa. I graduated from school in Washington. My first job was in Arizona. The company I worked for had main offices in Florida and California. There were also offices in New Mexico, Maine, Alabama, and Delaware. Eventually, I moved to New York where I lived for four years. Then I took a vacation in Hawaii. 
I returned but had to take a flight that made stops in Kansas and Nebraska. During my absence, my employer had gotten accounts in Alaska, Missouri, and Iowa, and I was very happy to hear it. My sister moved to Montana and my brother moved to Oklahoma. The following year, I moved to Illinois. That didn't suit me, so then I tried Idaho and Wyoming and found that I really liked the atmosphere in the West. I particularly liked the feeling in Montana and the northern part of Wyoming and around Cody and Sheridan. All right. I have some literary here. And the subject is gasoline vapor control. You're going to hear respiratory, complementary, agricultural, canisters, petroleum, emissions, recirculated, atmospheric, environmental, um, altruism, hydrocarbon, and technology. So you can tell by the word list it is difficult. Okay, so I will read this at 200, give you a little push, okay? All right, here we go. The Environmental Protection Agency is working on a ruling that is likely to cost consumers billions of dollars. The big question is whether the bill would be picked up first by the auto manufacturers or by the oil companies before being passed on to the marketplace. The answer depends on which industry will be made responsible for controlling the gasoline vapors that escape from the vehicle fuel tanks during refueling. Those vapors contribute to the formation of ozone and unstable gas. Atmospheric concentration of ozone is blamed for the increases in human respiratory ailments and decreases in agricultural crop yields. The oil people say, or excuse me, the oil People say the consumers using cars are being or better equipped to control the fumes. The population driving cars disagree. Both couch their positions in altruism. The core of the 12-year-old dispute, according to one high-ranking EPA official, is that both industries want to avoid the financial cost of cleaning up this problem. Spokespersons for the American Petroleum Institute and service station dealers of America, both located in Washington, estimate that it would cost their industry $8.5 billion to outfit the 175,000 gasoline service stations nationwide with stage two devices designed to recover fuel vapor at the pump nozzle. They are called stage two because they are employed in the second step of gasoline retailing, refueling the individual customer's car or truck at filling stations. So-called stage one systems are used to recover gasoline vapors during the truck delivery of gasoline to service station storage tanks. The oil industry's cost estimate for national installation of stage two technology is based on the average capital expense of $20,000 per station to install the special pumps and fuel storage tanks needed to make stage two work, the oil and service station spokesperson says. They say it would cost another $2,000 per station annually to maintain the stage two pumps. Spokesmen for domestic and foreign automakers say it would boost their production costs anywhere from $120 to $30 per car to install onboard recovery equipment designed to trap vapors in charcoal filled canisters from which they would be purged, recirculated and used in the fuel system. Automakers sold 11.2 million cars in the United States last year and are expected to match that performance in the coming years. Thus, the canisters would cost consumers as much as $1.2 billion a year. Other hidden costs, such as complementary components designed to ensure safety, could increase the cost of the onboard recovery systems, automakers say. Each industry disputes the other's dollar estimates accusing the other of overestimating or underestimating the cost, depending on who is making the charge. But the EPA says the auto and oil business estimates are too high. 
In any case, all parties agree that much of the vapor recovery expense would be passed on to the consumer in the form of higher prices. Conversely, doing nothing would be even more costly in terms of long-range damage to the public's health. According to EPA officials, more than one-third of United States residents live in cities where ozone concentrations are dangerously high and consistently above 12 parts per million, or PPM, according to the EPA. That exposure figure can rise to more than 50% of the country's population at one time or another, depending on whether depending on the weather and other atmospheric conditions, EPA researchers said. Under the Federal Clean Air Act, all areas of the country must meet what the government calls a safe ozone le level of 0.12 ppm by December 31st, 2017. Unfortunately, many states and cities will fail to meet that deadline, as noted by the EPA, partly because of the gasoline vapors that continue to vent into the air during vehicle refueling. The probability that many areas of the country will miss the deadline has created a regulatory dilemma for the agency. Ozone presents us with two monumental challenges. How do we protect public health? And how do we administer the Clean Air Act beginning in 2018? The EPA is considering a four-part strategy to address both the short-term and long-term ozone problems. A central part of that strategy is the improvement of existing regulations and programs, and a key portion of that plan is to do a better job of controlling the ozone-forming hydrocarbon emissions largely generated by gasoline vapors. The EPA administrator said in June that his agency has completed its analysis of the vapor control issue and would announce its decision on the matter within the next few months. We are all hopeful that the first priority given will be to the benefit of our environment. All right. Moving right along here. All right, so I'm going to give you some jury instructions, and I have a word list for you. You're going to hear McKinley surplusage, potential, penalty, penalties, menacing, enhancement, probation, foreman, robbery, sequence, technically, prosecution, firearm, offenses, paragraph, intentionally, and factual. All right. You're also going to hear different counts, like count five and six, and some of the penal code sections. All right, here we go. And I'll read this at 200. People versus McKinley, all parties are present. The trial jury is present. The court is going to answer the questions submitted this morning. There was a question in connection with counts five and six regarding when a principal is armed with a firearm said arming not being an element of the above offenses. 7.55 refers to an arming. The portion not being an element of the above offenses is surplusage as far as the jury is concerned. It is part of the verdict forms that were submitted, but it was not in the instructions, so you can disregard that portion. It is not a jury issue. In connection with the second question regarding the same counts, five and six, the defendant personally used a firearm within the meaning of the penal code sections 44332.9 and 44332.8, sections A and B, what is meant by used. If you will look at 7.56, the third paragraph, it will answer your question. It means to display a firearm in a menacing manner, intentionally to fire it or to intentionally strike or hit a human being with it. Your question number one was, what is meant by used is covered by that portion. Your second question, is it within the meaning of penal code section 44332.9 is of no concern to the jury. I will tell you that it is merely an enhancement. 
if there was a finding against the defendant on that point, it increases the potential penalty. Penal Code Section 44332.8, Sections A and B, are pleadings that restrict probation if there was a finding against the defendant on the use of a firearm in certain offenses. So it is not technically a jury question, but only the factual findings within the law. Those are principally pled so as to put a party on notice of the position of the prosecution for additional possible penalties and no probation. Those questions may be returned to the jury and they will be filed. Mr. Foreman, if you will now turn to the instructions with respect to count six. Your question was, if we substitute assault with a deadly weapon for robbery in the first paragraph, you actually meant the second paragraph, but we will follow your sequence. How does that change the meaning? All right. How are we doing on time? Good. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to start some Q&A. This is only one page, so what I'm gonna do is read it once at 180, again at 200, again at 225. Okay, so you're going to hear landslide, incipient, examination, physical, stabilized, observing. All right. So the first time will be at 180, and this is just Q&A, all right? Plaintiff is questioning. Here we go. Did you make any subsequent inspections of that home after this first occasion? Yes. What is your opinion? My opinion is that there is some incipient landslide beneath and adjacent to the home. And do you have an opinion based upon your examination and inspection of the home as to whether this is causing the foundation of the home to be damaged? Yes. And what is your opinion? It is causing the foundation to be damaged. In what respect is it damaging the foundation? It is causing the foundation to be pulled downward and outward with respect to the house. And have you inspected the plans of this home? Have you inspected the foundational plans? I have inspected the plans. Do you have an opinion as to whether the landslide has in the past caused physical damage to that portion of the home above the surface of the ground level? Yes, and what is your opinion? That it has caused damage to the portion above. Now, do you have an opinion as to whether this land movement or landslide has stabilized since the time of your first observing it to the time of your last observing it? Yes, and what is your opinion? It has not stabilized. All right, so we'll do that again at 200. Did you make any subsequent inspections of that home after this first occasion? Yes. What is your opinion? My opinion is that there is some incipient landslide beneath and adjacent to the home. And do you have an opinion based upon your examination and inspection of the home as to whether this is causing the foundation of the home to be damaged? Yes. And what is your opinion? It is causing the foundation to be damaged. In what respect is it damaging the foundation? It is causing the foundation to be pulled downward and outward with respect to the house. And have you inspected the plans of this home? Have you inspected the foundational plans? I have inspected the plans. Do you have an opinion as to whether the landslide has in the past caused physical damage to that portion of the home above the surface of the ground level? Yes, and what is your opinion? that it has caused damage to the portion above. Now, do you have an opinion as to whether this land movement or landslide has stabilized since the time of your first observing it to the time of your last observing it? Yes, and what is your opinion? It has not stabilized. All right, so last time at 2.25. Here we go. Did you make any subsequent inspections of that home after this first occasion? Yes, what is your opinion? My opinion is that there is some incipient landslide beneath the adjacent to the home. And do you have an opinion based upon your examination and inspection of the home as to whether this is causing the foundation of the home to be damaged? Yes, and what is your opinion? It is causing the foundation to be damaged. In what respect is it damaging the foundation? 
It is causing the foundation to be pulled forward and outward with respect to the house. And have you inspected the plans of this home? Have you inspected the foundational plans? I have inspected the plans. Do you have an opinion as to whether the landslide has in the past caused physical damage to that portion of the home above the surface of the ground level? Yes. And what is your opinion? That it has caused damage to the portion above. Now, do you have an opinion as to whether this land movement or landslide has stabilized since the time of your first observing it to the time of your last observing it? Yes. And what is your opinion? It has not stabilized. All right. Now, this next Q&A is going to have some broken English, so you have to just trust what you hear. Okay. All right, and it's going to start with plaintiff. And uh, I'll start. Um, I'll start this one at 200 and work my way to 225, okay? All right. And defense and the court does jump in a little bit. Here we go. Did he appear to you to be dead at that time? I didn't know whether he was dead or not. I didn't examine him. You just pushed him over in the front seat, is that right? He was already in the front seat. He was sitting about middle ways. He was close to the steering wheel. So I pushed his body over so that I could get room to drive. Did you notice any blood on the floor in the back of the car? I did not even turn around to look in the car. I just drove the car. Did you notice your hat was in the car? I didn't know anything was in the car at all but him and me. Now, when did Violet take your hat? She taken my hat the first time that she called me to come over. She threw her arm around me and tell me that we can make some money. Did you ever try to get your hat back from her? I never thought no more about my hat because she taken my hat many times and would return it to me. Was she wearing your hat when you last saw her? When she had taken it off my head, she put it on her head. Did she have it on her head when they took you home? I don't know whether she had it on then because I did not pay any attention to it. Did you see your hat at all that night after Violet had it? The only time I seen my hat is when I seen it in the police station when they showed it to me. Well, didn't you see it when the police arrested you out there? This was at the police station when they showed me the hat. They didn't show it to you when they first arrested you? Not to my knowing it, no. Now, incidentally, how much money did you have on your person when you were in the car with Mr. Horner after you drove him home? Well, I had a few dollars and some change. I may have had a dollar's worth of change. Maybe I had a little bit more even. Did you drive across any curb or on any lawn at all? No, I haven't. Now, you were walking towards the house when you noticed the policeman with the flashlight just before he arrested you, is that right? I was on my way. When I was talking, I seen two ladies standing there on the porch. Did you say two ladies? Yeah, two ladies were standing on the porch motioning. When I seen the two ladies on the porch motioning, I turned around. Why did you turn around? I turned around to go back home. When I turned back around again to go to this liquor store, then I saw a red light flashing on the pavement. Then I turned around to go back home and then the police flashed the light on me and told me to stop. Why did you keep turning around? Why did you do that? I was wondering what they were motioning for. I thought someone was behind me because I had been waiting for Violet to come by with my money at my house. I see. When you turned around, you didn't see anybody behind you, did you? No. Then you turned around to go back toward the liquor store. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's when I seen the red light flashing on. Then you turned back again. You turned to go back to your house. That's right. That's when the police flashed the light on me. Why did you turn around the second time? Why did I turn around the second time? What do you mean? Well, after you saw the light, didn't you turn around and walk back toward your house? After I seen the light flashing from the reflection from the pavement, then I turned around to go back home. 
you decided to go back home after you saw the light on the pavement. Is that it? Yeah, I knowed that I had a pistol on me. Then, you know, the police would pick me up and carry me to jail for carrying a pistol. That's the only reason you turned around. Is that right? To go home. You wanted to go home before the police saw that you had a gun? Yeah, right. I didn't want to go to jail. All right. How are we doing on time? Perfect. All right, so this Q&A is going to have defense questioning. This is depo format, and it is a car accident. Here we go. I'll read this at 225 since it's a, it's a little bit easier. Okay, here we go. Do you know what department the police was with? No, was it a uniformed officer? Yes, he was. Was it a black or navy blue uniform? Black, I think. And did you have a conversation with the police officer? Yes, I did. Where did that conversation occur? In front of the house, the apartment building. Other than you and the police officer, was there anyone else within hearing range? No, just them. There were two officers and me. Okay, was there, can you tell me in sum and substance, what was said by the police to you and what you told the police in response? Well, they asked me to describe what happened, which I did. They went and went ahead and checked my brakes and checked out the car and also checked the driver's car, the other party's car. Did you accompany them with that inspection? Yes. Did you notice what happened when they checked the brakes? Full stop. Did you examine the front of your vehicle? Yes. Did you notice any apparent damage to your? Yes, there were, there were some scratches on the bumper. What kind of bumper was on your car at the time of the accident? I don't know, plastic, I guess. You say there were some scratches. Did they occur on the middle portion of the front bumper or on the right or the left? I think it was on the right. No, I think it was the middle portion. Okay, did you see any indentations into the plastic other than the scratches on the surface? Well, you can, I guess it came from their license plate so you can feel it. So there was a little dent. Was there a dent in there as well as a scratch? Well, I'd say a deep scratch, nothing like a dent. When you say deep scratch, how deep was it? If you were close to your, if you were to close your eyes and put your hands on it, you know, and feel around over it, you can feel the lines. There were lines, like six lines going down. Okay, were they colored at all? Like, did the paint go off onto your car? Yes, they were blue. Was the blue the same blue that's in the number of the California license plate? Yes. Did you accompany the officers to the other vehicle? Yes, I did. And what, if anything, did you see? A bent license plate. Did you see any? I guess when we describe a bent or a bent license plate, that could mean all manners or configurations, right? Yes. Can you describe more fully the type of bend that you saw? Well, it, was, it wasn't a full half. Like if you were to take the plate and cut it in half, it wasn't like that. Can you describe what it was like, not what it was not like? I guess it was bent. Did the, let me see if I can help you a little. Did any part of the license plate go inward toward the vehicle? No. From its flat surface? No. When you say it was bent, was it bent across the length of it or the length? And was it the entire length of the vehicle? No. Or the license? No. Can you tell me how far that bend extended? From the middle to the end. To which end, the right or the left? The left. Now, if we were to look at the license plate being straight up and down, uh-huh, and we pushed, or with relation to the top and the bottom of the license plate, where did this bend occur? Would it be near the top or near the bottom or someplace in the middle? Near the top. Did you say near the top? Yes. Now, what was, was the top bent back a little bit from the rest of the license plate? Yes, it was. If the license plate were in one position, how far back from that position was the most bent part? Well, the bottom stuck out a little. Okay, how far did the top go back from what would appear to be the original position? Not even an inch, a fourth of an inch. Fourth of an inch? Yeah, just estimating. And how far did the bottom part extend forward from the rest of the license plate? Well, maybe, maybe half an inch, not sure. Did you conduct, you personally conduct any further examination of the Dodge Neon? No. Did you 
see if there was any damage to anything other than the license plate? No. From after that time or at the time, strike that. Let's go to the point of the police conducting the investigation of the two vehicles, okay? Yes. Did either one of them say anything? No, just the questions of what happened. But as they were testing the brake, did one say to the other one, brakes seem fine? Yes, they did. Now, did the other one respond to that? She wrote down what he said. Then, when they examined the front of your vehicle, was anything said to the two officers? No. When they examined the rear of the other vehicle, was anything said between the two officers? He told her he said something and she wrote it down. I don't remember what it was. Now, when you, let me back up a little bit. When you got to the high school, did you see the younger person that occupied the other vehicle? Yes. Get out of the vehicle and walk up to the school? Yes, I did. Can you describe her movements at all? Just a normal person. Objection, vague and ambiguous. Normal person walking to the school. Was she carrying books? A book bag. How far did you watch her walk? Until she got to the sidewalk. Can you estimate that distance? About five feet. In that period of time, nothing abnormal occurred to you. Is that correct? That's correct. Have you ever had any contact with the younger of the two occupants of that vehicle since the time of the accident? Well, I saw her driving around the neighborhood, but I didn't talk to her or anything. After the police inspected your respective vehicles, was anything said to you by the policeman? They gave me a, what's it called, a number, case number, something like that. They told me if there were any questions to call and give them the case number. Did you have any questions? No, I did not. Did you ever call them? No. Did you ever look at a copy of the police report that was made? Yes. When did you look at it? I think it was 2006, I believe. What occasion did you look? What occasion do you to be looking at the police report? Well, they had a suit. The driver had a suit against us, which was dismissed by the courts. Do you know where the suit was? Riverside County. Did you ever become aware as to why it was dismissed? No, they just told us it was dismissed. Were you served with a copy of the summons and complaint? Yes. Do you know if it was municipal or superior court? I think it was municipal. Was either of your parents served with a copy of the summons and complaint? My mother was. What, if anything, did you do with your copy of the summons and complaint? Well, I actually gave it to my mom and she filed them. Do you know what, if anything, she did with them? She kept it in a file cabinet. I think it's still there, too. Do you know if she contacted anybody about them? No. While the police were inspecting your vehicle, was the driver or her husband around either of the vehicles? No, they were inside the house. From the time that the police arrived, did you have any other contact with any of the, either the driver or her husband? After or before the police left? After they left or before they arrived? Well, okay, I got the impression that as the police were arriving, let's strike that. When the police arrived, did they make contact with anybody at the residence? Yes, they did. They went to the garage and talked to somebody, I don't know who. Did you see them talking to either the husband or the person driving the other vehicle? I believe it was her husband because she never came out of the house since we went in or she went in. Okay, did the police officers go inside? Yes, they did. Did they, did they call any paramedic personnel or the fire personnel to go inside the house? Yes. Did you see inside the house after? Yes, I did. Did you go inside the house? Yes, I did. What, if anything, did you witness while you were inside the house? Well, she was laying on her couch complaining about headaches. At the time that you observed this, was there anyone else in the room? Her husband, the police officers, and the paramedics. When you say she was complaining about her headaches, can you give me a summary of what she said as opposed to describing what was said? I couldn't understand what she was saying. She wasn't speaking in English. How do you know she was complaining of headaches? Well, she had her hand on her head like it was painful. What portion of her head? The front part. Did she speak English at any time that you were there? When I was there, no. While you were there, did you become aware of any other portion of her body that was hurting other than her head? No. Did you overhear anyone asking her how she felt, where she was hurt, anything like that? No. Did she ever see, did you ever see her move from the couch to anywhere else inside the condo? No. So for the whole time that you were there, she was laying down on the couch, is that correct? Yes. She was lying on her back? Yes. Was her head elevated? Yes. Were her feet up on the couch as well? Well, I don't know. I don't remember. When you say laying down, was she completely lying out or was she sitting in a reclining position? 
I guess in a reclining position, more seated than lying, more lying than seated. Did you hear her complain about any pain to her back? Not that I can remember. Did you ever see her lying down on the floor in the condo? No. Did you see the paramedics administer any treatment to her? No, but they did take her on a stretcher. Can you describe the stretcher? Describe the stretcher? It was not the ones with the wheels, but I guess the boards. Did you see her get onto the board? They had, she had assistance from the paramedics. When they moved her, did she utter any sounds at all? Sounds of pain. How would you, did it appear she was in a lot of pain? Yes. Could you tell where the pain was emanating from? No, because she was strapped on. Do you know if any repairs were ever done to your vehicle? My vehicle, none. How long were you inside her house? For five or six minutes. Did you say anything to anyone while you were inside the house? No. Did the police dismiss you, so to speak? Yes, they did. How did that occur? Well, they walked to walked with me to my car and said I could go. Did they say anything else other than you're free to go? No. Did you receive any citation as a result of the accident? None. Was your insurance ultimately reinstated so far as you know? After the accident, yes. Okay, now, shoot, I have a hard time turning that page. With the same company, did you, did you stay with the same insurance company? Yes, we did. Now, in the police report, on page four of the police report, the police have attributed to the statement that you took. If you look down through that, I'd like you to read it quietly to yourself, okay? Okay. Now, you've read from lines 11 to 25 on the report? Yes, I did. And the police indicated, well, it says what it says, but they said you told them that you were going about 40 to 45 miles per hour when you were first observed on the other vehicle. Is that a correct statement? Yes. Is that what you told them? Yes, I told them that. Then it said you were going down to about 20 miles an hour because you were going to stop. Yes. Is that what you told the police? Yes. You told me today that you slowed down to slower than 10 miles an hour. I beg your pardon? Oh, well, once I started thinking about it, then I realized on impact it was about 10, probably 10 miles an hour. The police also indicated, quote, your brakes would not respond, end quote. Do you recall telling the police that? Yes, I do. And is that in fact what you, what occurred at the time that you arrived at the intersection? Yes. Then it goes on to say that you were traveling about 20 miles per hour when you struck the vehicle. Is that what you told the police? Yes. Is that a true statement? I think so. Well, today you told us that you were traveling somewhat less than 10 miles per hour. Yes. At the time you hit the brakes? Yes. At or about the time you hit the other vehicle? Uh-huh. Now in the police report, you've told them that they say that you said that you were going about 20 miles per hour at the time of impact. What is more correct, what you told the police or what you told us today? I'd have to say what I told you today. Okay, is there any particular reason why you can or any way that you can justify the difference in what you told the police and what you told us today? Well, the police was talking to me. I was, I guess, in a nervous condition and really didn't know what to tell them. Did he give you anything to read after taking, after talking to you? No. After the police came, did you have any further conversations with or any further contact with who you identified as the husband of the driver of the other vehicle? No. Since the day of the accident, have you had any conversations with the driver of the other vehicle? None at all. Have you had any conversations with the husband of the driver of the other vehicle? None at all. Did you do anything to clean up the paint transfers on your vehicle? No, just left it how it was, yes. Do you know if anybody took any photographs of your vehicle or the other vehicle that you hit? Yes. Who did? State Farm Insurance. Do you know, and how do you know it was State Farm? Well, they told me to go to the building itself, State Farm Insurance. State Farm, you said State Farm? Yes. Do you know how State Farm enters into this picture? Their insurance. Could it have been Farmer's Insurance as opposed to State Farm? Oh, Farmer's Insurance, I'm sorry. I know it was their insurance though. I'm going to show you some photographs that would appear to be a red vehicle. Yes, do you recognize that vehicle? Yes, I do. Would that be yours? Yes, it is. Is that the one that you were driving? Yes, it was. Can you identify any damage that you've described in either of the photographs? Well, the scratch is on the top of the bumper. Okay, we're going to have to do some, look what I found. Okay, I'm going to take some of those pictures from you and now replace them in front of you with a laser copy of the photographs. Now I'm going to take one of them and write a little one on the bottom corner here 
and the other one I'm going to put as a number two. Is that okay? Yes. What's how are we doing? Five fifty-seven. Well, how was that? <laughs> a long time. It's twenty-five. Yes, you had some good sustained dictation there. That's very good. That's good practice. Yes, yes, and that was straight at one at two twenty-five. Good. Perfect. So. There's a yeah. lot of good writing there, so I'm glad. Yes. Yep. Yep. That was good. Uh, good sustained dictation. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> that's okay. Your endurance is just uh, getting better and better. That's you know. That's I noticed fun. that from taking the RPR, it's only five minutes, so it's pretty quick. So now I'm passing all those longer tests for the 200. I'm like, wow, these are so long in the editing process is so much longer and you really have to just be strong to do yes, it. Yes, I know it is. It's so much of it is that endurance, you know? Yeah. yeah. Being able to hang on that long. Yep. So, well, well, do you think you can join the live class on Friday? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Friday morning at nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Alrighty. Good. All right. Well, I'll see you Friday morning. And is there anything in particular that you want me to pull? Oh, you know, I was just thinking about that. I do want more accident, like accident stuff. I'm okay. not, I never, um, I never learned those briefs as a young, you know, young student writer. And so incorporating those briefs, like at the scene of the accident, after the accident, before the accident, those are hard for me and breaking them slows me down. So I'm still writing them out. Okay. That's okay. So I need, I need practice with, with that. It's so often an accident, you know, Okay. Test, but maybe it won't be, but still I need to be good at that for, for life. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I'll see if I can find some uh, car accident briefs and car accident terms so that we can go through those. Sounds great. All right. Well, you thank have a great you. night. Thank you. And I'll see you on Friday. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye, Donna.